Welcome to Bayou Time. I'm your host, Tanner McGee. Today we've got a really special guest for you, and that is Lafouche Parish District Attorney Christine Russell. Welcome on, welcome to the show, Christine. Thanks so much for having me, as always. Glad to have you on. we got a very important topic today, our senior citizens. Yeah. And I think your office has done something unique and special for the citizens of Lafouche Parish. You probably get some Terrebonne Parish res- residents showing up I hope as so. well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and you call it Senior Sources. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that event. Yeah, you know, when we, we believe in community outreach, and so we have a lot of school programs um, and other programs, and we really want to find something that we could do for our older citizens in our parish. And Senior Sources came about a couple years ago before COVID hit, because, of course, we had to stop for a bit. And it, it was an opportunity to bring all public officials together and bring our senior citizens together and allow public officials to tell them what services their office provides to them. And so oftentimes we get calls and people say, I don't know where to go, or um, can I get this, or can I get that? Well, they can sit down in a room and we're, we're telling them, in the DA's office, we can talk about our victim's department and what happens if they go through a scam. Um, you know, the clerk of court's talking about uh, exemption from jury duty. Uh, Craig Weber talks about things they have. And then um, Wendy Thibodeau came in and spoke about exemptions, TAC exemptions. And so with that, we also brought, bring in vendors. We bring in people in our community, hospitals. Um, we have flu shots. Um, they get their blood pressure checked. And so um, it's really a resource fair, the best way I can put it. And it's not just about telling them about the services. It's also getting them all out the house and having them a place to go to. I mean, so many of our, of our seniors are, are kind of stuck at home with nothing to do. It's an activity day for them, too, as, as, as I understand. Is that fair to say? Absolutely. And we just had the, um, uh, two weeks ago the one in La Rose. We had a great turnout, 150 people. And I think at one point uh, I was standing up. Um, we kind of finished our presentation, and it was so much chatter. And they were all at, they're eating their lunch, and they were, so, they were talking, and they were socializing. And we're trying to quiet them down a little bit so we can finish up. But it was beautiful to watch because they all came together. They were all having a great lunch together. Um, some of them hadn't seen each other, obviously, in a while. Or, heck, they may have seen each other yesterday, but they were still as excited to see each other. It was a great day. It was a great day. Now, your office, you say scams and stuff that target senior citizens. Mm-hmm. Um, do you all have any kind of special uh, attorneys who work on this in, the, in your office? Do you have any special prosecutors? Uh, what does your office actually do for our, our seniors who are, unfortunately, often the the target of a scam? Yeah, that's a great question. So we have um, Lisa Pinhew in our office actually screens those cases when they come in um, to make sure that the the, the crime that we're going to put for that particular uh, offense is, is correct. Our assistants in general work with her if they have any questions. Each one will handle their own case because we have some phenomenal assistant district attorneys. Um, and so they'll work with her if they need her. I think our victims department's where it's really special because we have an LCSW on staff. We have some trained uh, victim advocates who really take the time, especially with our senior citizens, to make sure they're getting the resources they need. If it's a bank and they need to try to get something from the bank, information from the bank, we can help them do that. So I think um, they get the attention that they need um, in our office if they're a victim, and not just a scam. You know, contractor Mm -hmm. fraud cases, of course, we're going to put that in there as well. Um, And then what we really try to educate when we do get out there is oftentimes they're the victim of a crime And it's from a loved one. And Mm -hmm. we try to educate them that we're not only looking for scams, but oftentimes the people that we love take advantage of us. And so we want to make sure that they understand our office is prepared to assist them with that, not only the case, but also psychologically, how do you move forward from that? Those are the hardest ones because they don't want to see their loved one prosecuted. A lot of the times they've raised them and it's it's just a tough situation. I know know that's hard. You also brought up a good point too, though. Post Ida, there's a, they are often a target of a lot of these construct c- contractor fraud yeah. cases. Is that what your office is seeing? Um, are y'all seeing an uptick in those kind of cases? I tell you, when we f- when it first uh, happened, Ida, uh, I contacted the DA in Calcasieu, Stephen Stephen Dwight, and said, "Educate me on what you did after your hurricane, so I don't make the same mistakes." We put a team together with Lafouche Parish Sheriff's Office. Gregory Stallnecker is an ADA in our office. He handles all of the contractor fraud cases. We have a handful, not as bad as what they saw in Lake Charles. I firmly believe because we got the task force sort of together quickly, it allowed us to get the message out that we would be on top of those cases. Um, But some people, it it breaks my heart when they come in. They've lost so much from these men and women who have taken advantage of people at, at the time when they needed people the most. 
you know, one of the most difficult parts of that is uh, our senior citizens don't really have earning potential anymore. So when they get taken advantage of, you're really hurting them. If I get taken advantage of, I have at least a couple of years left to, for HTV to pay me some more money <laughs> and make up what I lost. But a lot of these people, what's so yeah. sad is because it's, it's the last income they actually have. It is, and it's heartbreaking. And I think uh, making sure they have a support system, you know, it's not just about the criminal case. I, I think our victims department makes sure that there is a support system. And if there isn't, are there people in the community that can help um, these individuals, whether it be Meals on Wheels, with any of those services that are out there? And so we want to make sure whether they're a victim of a crime or if not, if we're just doing our community outreach, I think people just need to know there's so many people in our communities that have services, but so many people in our community that care. We just need to put them together. And we're talking about senior citizens right now with district, assist, assist, not assistant, with district attorney Christine Russell um, and kind of the tribulations that they go through. And having these kind of events, I, I think, really lets your office be out there in the forefront because a lot of times people don't know what's out there and Absolutely. they don't know who to call. I get emails all the time and I'm, sometimes I feel my state rep job is just putting people in the right direction like a traffic, mm-hmm. uh, you know, traffic controller. And by doing things like senior sources, you are letting people know who to call. Absolutely. And I think, look, I think it's two reasons we do it. One, um, I think getting the information out there to people about the community and what free programs they have and who to call if you have a problem, I think we need to do that. Um, Because like like you, we get phone calls or people come in the office and it has absolutely nothing to do with the district attorney's office. Well, you're not going to turn them away. I mean, you, you're going to use your own resources to make the phone calls or give them the number they need to get where they need to go. And that's what we do. Um, but, but it's not only about that. It's also about being proactive. I mean, that's why we have most of our programs, whether it be our children's programs or, or anything else. It's to, to make sure that maybe we could avoid there being a victim uh, or maybe we could avoid that, that period of time when they don't know who to call. So they're in these horrible situations. And so I think the program, one, you're absolutely right. It puts them, uh, gives them information they need. And also I think, God, if it can spare one victim from a crime or uh, the anxiety of who to call, uh, I think then we need to continue to do it. Yeah, I mean, the best way to fight crime is to make sure it never happens in the Correct. first place. I mean, Correct. that's the best scenario. And this is October 3rd. It's yes. at the Warren Harang Municipal Auditorium from 11 to 1. That's- Free event, lunch will be served. Uh, there are commodities that are being distributed after. Uh, we did that in um, La Rose as well. Uh, I think you need to show, of course, your driver's license that you um, or 65 or older. Um, and from 11 to 1, you will see uh, we should have all of the public officials there who will be speaking. Uh, they entertain questions as well. If there's a particular thing that you want to know for your own uh, sake, you certainly can ask that while you're there. We have tons of vendors. We have the hospitals that will be there, the library, uh, and many more. Uh, and so we really welcome everybody to come out. And this is not the only event you're doing in Lafouche Parish. You've got some other things going on as we well. Do. We do. Um, you're doing some stuff on hunter safety right now. We do. Every, every year we go into the, the Shock Talk community. Cam, uh, my predecessor, started that years ago. And um, every year they kind of wait for it. And so we bring someone from Wildlife and Fishery, and they come in. Uh, um, there's a dinner. And they talk about the, the rules, the laws, the regulations that have changed for that year. And of course, people can ask the questions they have. I don't. I don't stay up too much on the um, the hunting, the fishing, and um, and I, I don't know all of those. So I learn things every single year when we have that agent come in and educate us on deer heads over state lines and all the other things that I need to know. And so it's a great evening. We welcome everyone to come out to that in Choctaw. That's October twelfth um, at six o'clock, and it's a great time also for the community. Um, to get together, kind of like you said, with the senior citizens. It's a great opportunity. Everybody is so busy. And so it's an opportunity for that community to get together. People from Chack Bay come and Kramer. And, um, you know, it's a great time for children to come out with their fathers, um, their mothers, and um, and hear about the new the new rules when it comes to hunting. They do change a they lot. Change. And people are surprised. You know, I was, we had to approve rules and regulations mm-hmm. at the in the house when I was there. And I remember a couple of years ago, they changed that they banned deer urine, which I grew up, you used to rub it all over yourself and you could really? buy it. Oh yeah. And you can buy it still, the scent at all the different sporting goods stores, but it's actually illegal to use in the field. Um, so I used to be frustrated that a product that's commercially available, that's not illegal to purchase. It's just illegal to have. Um, but yeah, deer urine is something that you cannot have. And maybe they need to bring it up on I'm going to add that to the list of things I did not know. Yeah. Look, 
I wouldn't expect you to know about deer urine. <laughs> um, this is where we're taking it on and buy you time these days. But no, it's just a, it just shows you how you know a, a cust a consumer thinks it's a, a, a legal right. usable product, and they bring it with them, and they they can get a very hefty fine for it. Right. And, and it's and look, ignorance of the law is not a defense, but and we understand that. But they need to have the education. So I think it, it's, it's sort of an obligation that if there are rules that are constantly changing, how do we expect them to know? And so I think this is another opportunity for us to give information to our constituents, to our public, and hopefully educate them so that they can have a wonderful hunting season and they'll understand the rules that they have to abide by. I do too, absolutely. we got a little bit of time left. What else is going on in Lafourche Parish? Are you all seeing a, a, an uptick in, in DWIs? Um, what's, I, I feel like there is just my own personal knowledge, yeah. but what can we do? Yeah. You know, listen, DWIs are something that we've talked about a lot in our office lately. We of course had a recent trial, uh, three counts of vehicular homicide. There was a one in the, the paper recently. You and I both know the frustration when it comes to DWIs. Everybody wants to know why they're not in jail and they should be in jail. How are they out? And we all know that a first and a second is, are misdemeanors and on a third, uh, even if you give them the maximum of five years, they're going to serve about 18 months and they're out. And I don't think people realize that. I think they assume that on DWI third, they're going away for 30 years. That's not an option. Another thing that we hear a lot about is, well, how are they driving without a license? Uh, I find that I'm, I often laugh at that because if you're going to commit a crime, you don't only really care if you have a driver's license when you do it. That's the last thing they care about. I think what we're seeing in our since COVID, since Ida, I think people self-medicate a lot, they drink more, and they're getting on our roads, and we have more people on our roads. We have got to continue as public officials to, to push the message, do not get behind the wheel of a vehicle. And I think it's imperative that um, district attorneys make sure that we prosecute those who do. Understanding that there are limits on what we can do, but we have to take a stand and prosecute. And your office does a great job, and you and I have talked before about trying to get people to use Uber more. Yeah. You know, these other services yeah. call people, you know, because uh, really when it gets to that point, it's, it's really, I think, a, a big failure on everybody's part. It's a great point. Like with, with Nichols right there, we need some other, you know, transportation issue places. And I think, although I think that generation does a better job than ours, Absolutely. they really use designated drivers. I think it's our generation and above that the ones who need help. Just remember, it's October 3rd. We have senior sources with District Attorney Christine Russell. She's doing a great job in Lafourche Parish trying to prevent crime before it happens and educate the public. Um, and thank you for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks. This is Tanner McGee for Bayou Time, and we look forward to seeing you next time.